Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, ma'am, and good afternoon, classmates. So today, I will be reporting about sustainable development. So this will be the content of my topic. Uh, what is sustainable development? The trivias. The history of sustainable development. World conferences on sustainable development. And the status of sustainable development goals in the Philippines. So first is, what is sustainable development? So sustainable development is the idea that human societies must live and meet their needs without compromising the ability of the future generation to meet their own needs. So this particular official definition of sustainable development was coined for the first time in the Brundtland Report in 1987. So, specifically, sustainable development is a way of organizing the society so that it can exist in the long term. This means taking into account both the imperatives present and those of the future, such as the preservation of the environment and natural resources or social and economic equity. So, let's go over some trivia about sustainable development. First is that more than 1 billion people still do not have access to fresh water. And another is that if people worldwide switch to energy efficient light bulbs, the world would annually save around 120 US billion dollars. And that on the global average, the sea level rose by around 19 centimeters or that's around 7.1 inches from the year 1901 to 2020 as the ocean expanded due to global warming and the melting of our ice. The fourth one is that energy is the dominant contrib contributor to climate change and it accounts for around 60% of the total global greenhouse gas emissions. The fifth one is that 40% of the world oceans are heavily affected by human activities. So this includes pollution, de depletion of fisheries, and loss of coastal habitats. So let's go over the brief history of your sustainable development. So it actually started with the industrial Revolution. So as the Industrial revolu Revolution um, arises, so did the idea of sustainable development. The Western societies, they started to discover that their economic and industrial activities had a significant impact on, this, on the environment and the social balance. And um, I will be going over some of the... Um, events that occurred in the past that actually uh, raised awareness on sustainable development. So let's start with the Ronschlapp nuclear fallout in 1954. So the 1st of March in 1954 actually marked one of the most serious nuclear fallout incidents in history. So during that particular day, the United States conducted its largest ever nuclear weapon test. It was codenamed Castle Bravo at the Bikini Atoll in Marshall Islands. Uh, Bravo was actually part of Operation Castle, which is a series of nuclear tests designed to develop uh, an aircraft deliverable thermonuclear weapon. However, due to design error, uh, the explosion reached a yield of around 15, uh, 15 megatons, making it two and a half times larger than expected and more than, more than 1,000 times as powerful as the Hiroshima bomb. So this particular radioactive fallout uh, spread over uh, more than 11,000 square kilometers and that Traces of the radioactive material were detected even in Australia, India, Japan, the United States, and Europe. So next is the Mercury Crisis in Minamata. This occurred in 1956. So Minamata disease 
is methylmercury poisoning that occurred in humans who actually ingested fish and shellfish contaminate, contaminated by methylmercury. Uh, this methylmercury was actually discharged in the wastewater from a chemical plant and uh, typical symptoms of the Minamata disease uh, included sensory disturbances, ataxia, dysartia, constriction of the visual field, and um, pregnant mothers who are able then to um, ingest the methylmercury contaminated um, fisheries uh, were had actually serious um, serious effects on the child, including uh, extensive lesions of the brain of the babies born. So in 1957, March 18, the Torrey Canyon oil spill happened. So uh, the super tanker, Torrey Canyon, was en route from Kuwait to a refinery in Milford Haven, uh, United Kingdom. It was actually loaded with around 119,328 tons of crude oil. And while it was underway to its destination, the ship ran aground on the Seven Stones Reef or nabangga po siya sa Seven Stone Reef, uh, which actually caused the ship to um, parang nahati siya sa gitna. And the oil that it actually contains... Uh, Siyempre na, ano po, nagkaroon ng oil spill. It was uh, uh, the British Naval and Air Forces, uh, they actually bombed the ship in order to open the remaining tanks and release the rest of the oil into the sea. The oil was then set on fire by dropping aviation fuel, uh, napalm, and sodium chloride, chloride devices, and it is believed that the oil in the vicinity of the wreck was destroyed by March 30th. So around, that's around 20 or rather uh, 12 days after the incident happened. Uh, this operation was considered partially successful, but of course it did not prevent uh, escaping oil from, it did not prevent the oil from polluting many parts of the southwest of England, causing deaths of thousands of seabirds and, of course, threatening the livelihoods of the local people in the upcoming summer tourist season during that time. So, uh, another is the Seveso disaster. On July 10 of 1976, a certain valve broke at the industrial Shimichi Meda Societa Azion Nara or ICMESA, a, ke uh, a chemical plant in Italy. So this result, uh, this res uh, this accident resulted in the release of a chemical cloud containing the highly toxic dioxin, TCDD. And of course, the winds carried that particular cloud southeast where it actually contaminated the land and vegetation in the municipality of Seveso. The company that ran the ICMESA plant to produce pesticides only admitted the incident almost one week after it had happened. So by that time, since one week na nakalipas bago nila inadmit na kasalanan po nila, uh, there were already severe cases of dioxin poisoning and as a consequence, more than 600 people had to be evacuated from their homes and as many as 2,000 were treated for dioxin poisoning. So in 1984, uh, the Bhopal disaster happened. So specifically on December 3, more than 40 tons of methyl isocyanate gas leaked from a certain pesticide in Bhopal, India. Uh, this resulted in the immediate killing of at least 3,800 people and causing significant morbidity and premature death uh, for many thousands more. So the company which actually involved in this disaster tried to dissociate itself from legal responsibility. Eventually, it actually reached a settlement 
with the Indian government through mediation of that country's Supreme Court and accepted moral responsibility. It actually paid around $470 million in compensation, but this amount is relatively small based on the significant underestimations of the long-term health consequences of the exposure that was happening. So the disaster indicated a need for enforceable, enforceable international standards for environmental safety, prevent strategies to avoid similar accidents and industrial disasters preparedness. So uh, we are more familiar with this, the 1986 Chernobyl accident. So on April 26, 1986, a sudden surge of power during a reactor system test destroyed Unit 4 of the nuclear power station at Chernobyl in Ukraine. The accident and the fire that actually followed released massive amounts of radioactive material in the environment. So after the accidents, accident, officials closed off the area within 30 kilometers from the plant, except for persons with official business and those people evaluating and dealing with the consequences of the accident operating the undamaged reactors. So the government, the Russian government, evacuated about 115,000 people from the most heavily contaminated areas in 1986 and another 220,000 people in the subsequent years. So in 1989, so halos magkakasunod lang po yung naging major accidents, uh, the Exxon Valdez oil spill happened. So this Exxon Valdez oil spill was a man-made disaster that occurred when the Exxon Valdez, an oil tanker, uh, spilled 11 million gallons of crude oil into Alaska's Prince William Sound on March 24, 1989. So the oil covered around 1,300 miles of coastline and killed hundreds of thousands of seabirds, otters, seals, and whales. Nearly 30 years later, pockets of crude oil still remain in some location. So in 1999, uh, another disaster happened. They call this the Erika disaster. Uh, it's actually a tanker carrying around 31,000 tons of heavy fuel oil as cargo. So due to a severe storm, it actually broke into two and about 20,000 tons of oil were spilled. So, yun po yun ang nangyari kay Erika disaster. So, following all of the disasters, let's go to the conferences that actually happened um, that, uh, kumbaga, para na-enforce po yung sustainable development. So, the first one was in 1972. So, after the tragedy of... Uh, of the past, the world organized itself regarding global politics. So the first historical conference about environmental concern happened in Stockholm in 1972. Uh, during this conference, conference, the world leaders met to discuss the human impact on the environment and how it actually was related to economic development. One of the main goals of the gathering was to find a common outlook and common uh, principle to inspire and guide the world's population to preserve the human environment. And in 1979, the World Climate Change Organization, WMO, the UN Environment Program, the Food and Agricultural Organization and World Health Organization organized the first ever uh, World Climate Change Conference in Switzerland. So one of the main goals of the conferences was, conference was to assess the knowledge of climatic change. And another objective was to analyze the possible future climatic variability and its implication on human, human society. So in 1988, the World Conference on Changing Atmosphere actually happened. So this is also known as your Toronto Conference. And more than 300 scientists 
and policymaker participated with the goal of taking specific actions to reduce the threatening crisis caused by pollution to the atmosphere. Of course, the conference aim was to develop a comprehensive framework for protocols on the protection of the atmosphere. So in Rio de Janeiro in 1992, uh, they called it the Rio de Janeiro Earth Summit. The UN tried to help the world leaders rethink about economic development and come up with solutions to prevent the destruction of irreplaceable natural resources and of course the pollution of the planet. In 1995, the first uh, COP or Conferences of Parties actually happened and it was focused on the abil ability of the world's nation to develop and implement policies to fight climate change. And also, um, the Kyoto Protocol happened in 1997. Uh, this uh, were in the world's leaders started negotiating legally binding obligations for de developed countries to reduce their emissions of greenhouse gases. That and in 2009, the Copenhagen Summit or the Copenhagen Conference signaled the climax of the two-year negotiation that started in the um in the conferences of parties in 2000 in Bali. The aim of this was international climate change cooperation. In 2014, the United Nations Climate Change Conference or COP15 was held in Peru. In this meeting, negotiations toward a global climate agreement started and the goal was to actually reduce the greenhouse gas emissions and to limit the global temperature increase to 2 degrees Celsius. In 2015, uh, the, par the parties of the United Nations Framework on Climate Change reached a landmark agreement. So they agreed to accelerate and intensify the actions and investments needed for a sustainable car low carbon Future. So, in fact, the Paris Agreement brought for the first time all the nations into a united cause, taking bold efforts to fight climate, climate change and, of course, to adapt to it. And in 2015, in New York, uh, the Sustainable Development Goals was actually uh, coined. Uh, it actually adopted around 17 17 goals, 169 targets that should be adopted by the year 2030. So speaking of the sustainable development goals, we'll be talking about the targets, indicators, and the programs and activities or projects. So if we go back and take a look, we will be focusing on the environmental aspect of the sustainable development. So that will be particularly your um, SDG, as we call it, SDG 13, 14, and 15. So specifically your climate change, life below water, and life on land. So let's start with your SDG 13. So uh, it says here, climate change is a real and undeniable threat to our entire civilization. The effects are already visible and it will be catastrophic unless we act now. So through education, innovation, and adherence to our climate commitments, we can make the necessary changes to protect the planet. These changes also provide huge opportunities to modernize our infrastructure, which will create new jobs and promote greater prosperity across the Blue. So what are the targets of this Sustainable Development Goal 13? So first is to strengthen resilience and adaptive capacity to climate-related hazards and natural disasters in all countries. The second is to integrate climate change measures into national policies, strategies, and planning. Another is to improve education, awareness raising, and human and constitutional capacity on climate change 
change mitigation, adaptation, impact reduction, and early warning. It is also to implement the commitment undertaken by developed country parties to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change to a goal of mobilizing jointly $100 billion annually by 2020 from all sources to address the needs of developing countries in the context in the context of meaningful mitigation actions and, transpa and transparency on implementation and fully operationalize the Green Climate Fund through its capitalization as soon as possible. And also to promote mechanisms for raising capacity for effective climate change-related planning and management in least developed countries and small island developing states, including focusing on women, youth, and local and marginalized communities. And what are the indicators of your Sustainable Development Goal 13? So uh, let me click on this file. So uh, this is actually taken from the Philippine Statistics uh, Authority and it was uh, updated as of the 4th of April, 2022. So these are the current uh, indicators that we have in making sure that we are following the Sustainable Development Goal number 13. So, uh, target number 13.1 was to strengthen resilience and adaptive capacity to climate-related hazards and natural disasters in all countries. So, these are its sub-indicators. Um, sub so, as you can see, it says your number of deaths, missing person, and directly affected person attributed to disasters per 100,000 population. So if you take a look at this, 13.1.1.1, the number of deaths attributed to disasters per 100,000 population is 0.34 in 2016. So this is the baseline of the indicator. So in 2016, around 0.34 per 100,000 population is actually uh, uh, Dai, uh, parang 0.34 na tao ang namamatay per 100,000 population. Parang ganun po yung kanyang pagkaka, I mean, ganun po yung indicator niya. So, ibig sabihin kung we try, siguro around 300,000 population, there is one death. So, ganun. But however, in the year 2021, medyo tumataas po siya. So, it becomes 0.89. And our target before 2030 is zero. So as of the moment, this is what we have. 0.89 per 100,000 population ang namamatay. And for missing persons naman po, it's actually 0.05 in 2016 per 100,000 population. And by the year 2021, we are at 0.12. So medyo tumaas din siya, 0.12 missing person per 100,000 population due to disasters. And by 2030, of course, our goal is zero. And the number of directly affected persons attributed to disasters per 100,000 population. So in 2016, per 100,000, there are around 13,779.4 people affect, affected. And by the year 2021, it actually increased to around more than 18,000. But our goal is to decrease it, decrease it by 2030. And for another of the target, uh, another baseline or another indicator for target 13.1 is that the number of countries that adapt or and implement national disaster risk reduction strategies in line with the Sendai framework of disaster uh, for disaster risk reduction from 2015 to 2030. So, ibig sabihin one, it's actually a perfect score. So, um, in our country, we're able to implement national disaster risk reduction strategies. So, by 2022, one pa din, and by 2020, 2030, rather, one pa din siya. So, um, in relation to this, we have your 13.1.3, or the proportion of local government that actually adapt and implement local disaster risk reduction strategies in line with national disaster risk reduction strategies. So this is per region. Yung binigay po nilang data is per region. So for NCR, from, 20, uh, from 2016 
uh, ang nag implement po ng local disaster risk reduction strategy is around 52.9%. But as of 2021, 100% na siya. So, by the year 2030, of course, uh, ang goal natin is uh, 100% na nag adapt tayo. So, as of the moment, okay naman po sa NCR. So, particularly in CAR, this is where uh, it's actually medyo questionable siya. Kasi, if you take a look, in 2016, 94% adaptation or uh, 94% of the... 94% na nag adapt tayo ng reduction strategies, pero nung 2021, medyo bumaba po siya. Uh, hindi lang ako sure kung bakit po bumaba yung data natin. So, baka hindi na tayo masyadong kaka-adapt sa sobrang lakas din siguro ng mga disasters na napupunta po sa atin. So, these are for the other regions na okay naman, pataas naman po sila, although yung iba din is bumaba pa. For the other indicators, so your second target is to integrate climate change measure on national policies, strategies, and planning. So, uh, number, uh, number of countries that have communicated the establishment or operationalization of an integrated policy or strategy or plan which increases their ability to adapt the, to the adverse impacts of climate change and foster climate resilience and low greenhouse gas emissions development in a manner that does not threaten food production. This includes a national adaptation plan, nationally determined contribution, national communication, and biennial update report of or other. So for our data, uh, baseline natin ng 2016 is one. So ibig sabihin na ka, um, fully, kumbaga, okay na po tayo dito. So, naka, kumbaga, na, na, na-reach na po natin itong ating target 13.2. So, 2020, reached pa din yung target, and by 2030, na reach pa rin po natin yung target in integrating climate change measures into national policy strategies and planning. However, for the other targets ng ating SDG 13, di ba, if we take a look, medyo madami-dami yun, wala po po tayong data. So, ibig sabihin, wala pa tayong target na or wala pa tayong available data kung kung target ba natin yung ating mga indicators. So, ano lang po, yung nafa-follow natin is only 13.1 and 13.2 out of the 8 targets of your um, SDG number 30. So, going back, paano po ba natin tinatarget itong mga indicators na to? That's where your PAPS um, takes into place or your projects, actions, and plans. So, we have three PAPS in SDG 13. So, we have the first one here, Making Cities Resilient by 2030, or what we call your MCR 2030. This is actually a project, and the objectives are as follows. So, increase city understanding of risk and commitments to disaster risk reduction and resilience. And of course, increase the capacity uh, to plan for risk reduction and resilience, and increase city capacities to implement resilience actions and of course to reduce risks. So the implementing agency of this MCR 23 is your BND or the Department of National Defense, particularly the Office of the Civil Defense. Uh, the target for this particular project are your LGUs who are interested in enhancing your urban resilience through experience, through exchanging experiences in in its extensive network, and their key accomplishment as of the moment is that the OCD or the Office of the Civil Defense spo sponsored what we call your pre sign up clinic and ceremonial launch of your MCR thirteen last October twenty six and twenty nine twenty twenty one, and with this sixty five cities and municipalities in the Philippines joined or reaffirmed their interest in MCR 2030. So another is your survival and recovery shore assistance program. 
So the survival and recovery, or what they call your shore assistance program of the Department of Agriculture, um, aims to support the government's goal in helping agricultural household in calamity affected affected areas. This is by providing what we call your shore, shore loan program, which will restore the normalcy in the livelihood of farmers and fishermen by lessening, by helping lessen the burden of being left on their own and recover from their losses during a disaster, when disaster happens. So this project will actually help build resilience for the poor and those who are in vulnerable situations that are directly affected by disasters and, and any economic shock that comes with it. Another is your weather research and forecasting. So this is a project by the DOST Pag-asa and it aims to provide a high, re high resolution or 5 kilometer uh, climate change projection using what we call your weather research and forecasting model. And it actually covers the entire Philippines. Uh, uh, the outputs for this particular uh, model are expected are expected to contribute uh, to updating the LGU's um, risk reduction management plans. And this also, of course, um, ang target niya is yung SDG 13.1 pa rin, yung pinakauna, which is to um, strengthen the resilience and up adaptive capacity of communities. So let's go now to your SDG 14 or your left below water. So it says here, healthy oceans and seas are essential to our existence. They cover 70% of our planet and re we rely on them for food, energy, and water. Yet we have managed to do tremendous damage to these precious resources. We must protect them by eliminating pollution and overfishing and in immediately start to responsibly manage and protect all marine life around the world. So what are the targets of your life below water? So medyo madami po yung targets niya. So it should be 14. So the 14 targets are by 2025, prevent and significantly reduce marine pollution of all kinds, in particular from land-based activities, uh, including marine debris and nutrient pollution. And by 2020, sustainably manage and protect marine and coastal ecosystems to avoid significant adverse impacts, including by strengthening, strengthening their resilience and take action for the restoration and in order to achieve healthy and productive oceans. Also to minimize and address the impacts of ocean acidification, including through enhanced scientific cooperations at all levels. And by 2020, effectively regulate harvesting and end overfishing, illegal, unreported, and unregulated fishing and destructive fishing practices, and implement science-based management plans in order to restore fish stocks in the shortest time feasible, at least to levels that can produce maximum sustainable yield as determined by their biological characteristics. And also, by 2020, conserve at least 10% of coastal and marine areas consistent with national and international law and based on the best available scientific information. Another is to prohibit certain forms of fisheries subsidies which contribute to overcapacity and overfishing, eliminate subsidies that contribute to illegal, unreported, and unregulated fishing, and refrain from introducing new such subsidies, recognizing that appropriate and effective special and differential treatment for developing and least developed countries should be an integral part of the World Trade Organization fisheries subsidies negotiation. Another is by 2030, increase the economic benefits to small island developing states and least developed countries from the sustainable use of marine sources, including through sustainable management of fisheries, aquaculture, and tourism. And of course, increase scientific knowledge, develop research capacity, and transfer marine technology, taking into account the Intergovernmental Oceanographic Commission criteria and guidelines on transfer of marine technology. 
also to provide access for small-scale artisanal fishers to marine resources and markets. Another is to enhance the conservation and sustainable use of oceans and their resources by implementing international law as reflected in UNCLOs. So what are the indicators of this particular SDG? So for uh, the available data that we have according to the PSA is that ito lang po, which is very sad kasi, di ba, parang Philippines is, di ba, ang dami nating water uh, resources. So parang out of the, di ba, puro tayo tubig, pero among the, all of the um, targets that I've actually mentioned, ito lang po yung meron tayong indicator. So it's target number 14.5 which indicates to conserve at least 10% of coastal and marine areas consistent with national and international law and based on the best available scientific information. So, coverage of protected areas in relation to marine areas. So, under this, uh, in terms of million hectares, ang baseline natin was 1.41 in the year 2016. So, by the year 2020, naging 3.14 siya. So, napalawak natin yung protected area natin. And 14.5.1.2, coverage of protected areas in relation to marine areas, NIPAS, and locally managed MPAs or marine protected areas. Baseline was 0.65 in 2016. Tapos by the year 2020, naging 1.42. Ang target natin by the year 2030 is 0.7. So, nasurpass na po natin yung target by 2020. Uh, unfortunately, wala po tayong data doon sa ibang target. So, baka wala po tayong or baka po ano, uh, hindi natin, hindi pa natin sa, uh, kumbaga hindi pa natin na implement yung particular target na yan. So, what are the PAPs or the projects involved in SDG 14? We actually have three. Uh, the first one is the National Search for Outstanding Coastal Community Malinis at Masaganang Karagatan. So, they term this as your MMK. Uh, this is a program by the BFAR or Bureau for Fisheries and Aquatic Resources. And it actually aims to promote fisheries protection and conservation. So, this uh, protection and conservation program aims to target your SDG 14.2 and 14.4. So, baka hindi pa tayo, wala pa tayong data kung sino yung outstanding coastal community kaya hindi pa rin po na-update sa ating indicators. And another is your National Stock Assessment Program or your NSAP. This is another program of the BFAR and it actually conducts assessment of major pelagic and demersal species in major fishing grounds of the country through establishment of standardized time series and biological data by fishing ground, which are fundamental to science-based fisheries management, formulation of policies, plans, and strategy. And this program aims to support your uh, SDG 14.4, which is to regulate harvesting and, and overfishing, illegal, unreported, and unregulated fishing. So, medyo parang ang hirap nito kasi parang most of the time naman sa ating coastal areas is ang dami pa ding illegal fishing and overfishing. And another action plan is your Coastal and Marine Ecosystems Management Program or your CMMP. This is handled by your DNR BMB or Biodiversity Management Bureau and it aims to comprehensively manage, address, and effectively reduce the drivers and threats of degradation of the coastal and marine ecosystems in order to achieve and promote sustainability in ecosystem services, food security, and climate change resiliency. So it covers marine protected areas, marine key biodiversity, and adjacent municipal waters. So this will directly contribute to the aim of 14.2 and 14.5. So wala pa tayong data, baka hindi pa tapos yung kanilang program. So, last is your life on land. So, it says here, a flourishing life on land 
is the foundation for our life on this planet. So we are all part of the planet's ecosystem and we have caused severe damage to it through deforestation, loss of natural habitats, and land degradation. So promoting a key sustainable use of our ecosystems and preserving biodiversity is not a cause. It is a key to our own survival. So what are the targets? Medyo madami pong targets si uh, SDG 15. Papasadahan ko na lang po. So ensure the conservation, restoration, and sustainable use of terrestrial and inland freshwater ecosystems and their services, in particular forests, wetlands, mountains, and drylands, in line with obligations and their international agreements. So also to promote implementation of sustainable management of all types of forests, Halt deforestation, restore degrade, degraded forests, and substantially increase afforestation and reforestation globally. Another is to combat desertification and also to ensure the conservation of mountain ecosystems. Take urgent and significant action to reduce the degradation of natural habitats. Promote fair and equitable sharing of benefits arising from utilization of genetic resources and promote appropriate access to such resources as internationally agreed. Also to take urgent action to end poaching and trafficking of protected species. Introduce measures to prevent the introduction and significantly reduce the impact of invasive alien species on land and water ecosystem and control or eradicate the priority species. Integrate ecosystem and biodiversity values into national lo and local planning, development processes, poverty reduction strategies and accounts. Mobilize and significantly increase financial resources from all sources to conserve and sustainably use biodiversity and ecosystems. Mobilize significant resources from all sources and at all levels to finance sustainable forest management and provide adequate incentives to developing countries to advance such management, including for conservation and reforestation, enhance global support for efforts to combat poaching and trafficking of protected species. And these are the indicators that we have. So as of the moment, or rather as of the 4th of April 2022, these are the um, latest, tar uh, latest data that we have on the targets that was mentioned earlier. So, madami-dami po tayong data for the uh, target number 15, uh, life on land. So, for 15.1, uh, these are the targets that we have. So, forest area as proportion to the total land area. So, 23.4 uh, as the baseline in 2015. And, uh, syempre, ganun pa din. On the 2015 pa din, yun na yung latest data natin. We don't have any data yet as of 2022 and by uh, our target is to 28.5 by 2030 so forest area as proportion of total land area so kailangan pa, pa natin padamihan yung ating forest area by 2030 and 15.1.2 we have here the proportion of important sites with poor ecosystem for terrestrial and freshwater biodiversity that are covered by protected areas. So, um, as of 2019, we had 0 0.0033 poor ecosystem, but the latest is wala na po tayong poor ecosystem for terrestrial and freshwater biodiversity. And another is proportion of important sites with fair eco ecosystem uh, ito naman, 2019, we have 0.1932 as our baseline. And bumaba na siya ulit by 0 .04, uh, 0 0.0445 na lang siya ng 2021. So, yung fair natin, so because we have four, poor, fair, good, and excellent. So, napababa na po natin yung poor, pati yung fair, napababa na po natin. Pagdating po dun sa good, napataas na natin siya by 0.5445 noong 2019, naging 0.7553 na siya noong 2021. And yung excellent natin from 0.2591 noong 2019, naging 0.2001 na siya noong 2020. So, napropotect na natin or nagkakaroon na tayo ng mas maraming forest areas. And for target 15.2, uh, no data yet. 
For target 15.3, combat desertification, restore degraded land and soil, including land affected by desertification, uh, drought and floods, floods, and strive to achieve a land degradation neutral world. So forest coverage in hectares. So forest coverage natin in 2015, ito pa din, wala pa tayong tar, uh, hindi pa nat, wala pa tayong target and ganito pa din kadami yung ating forest coverage. For the for target 15.5, take urgent and significant action to reduce the degradation of natural habitats, halt the loss of biodiversity and by 2020 protect and prevent the extinction of threatened species. This is the red list index. So, nung 2016, meron tayong 0.48. Now, on 2019, we have 0.59. Ibig sabihin na padami po natin yung nasa listahan ng, uh, ng protected uh, and threatened species. So, napadami na po natin yung nasa ating listahan. So, for the other targets, eto lang siya. Wala po tayong data. Um, this is still under target 15. So, official development assistance and public expenditure on conservation and sustainable use of biodiversity and ecosystem. This is in terms of um, million dollars. This is the amount that we ha have actually used in 2016. And in 2020, napadami po natin yung nagamit nating amount to conserve the biodiversity and ecosystems of our country. Same is true with another target, parang naka, ano lang siya, sub-targets lang po kasi siya. But in totality, napataas po natin yung ating gastos in terms of um, conserving our biodiversity and ecosystem. So those are the available data on target number 15. Now, uh, what are the programs that we have to ensure that we are uh, kumbaga na reach natin yung target 15. So we have number one, protected area development and management. So this is uh, this is a program that covers the that measures the conservation of biodiversity within and adjacent to protected areas. So it will ensure that our coverage is rationalized and is being retained and prioritized with high biodiversity values while providing appropriate governance regime for protection of key biodiversity areas, such as through local conservation areas and, of course, your indigenous community conserved areas or ICCAs. And this will directly contribute to your target number 15.2. So, another program is the protection and conservation of wildlife. Uh, this is under your BMB or Bureau of Manage Biodiversity Management Bureau, which is to enforce the wildlife laws that we currently have, um, the protection of our some of the wildlife species that we have, such as marine turtles, dugong, tamarau, Philippine raptor, crocodile, or shear, Philippine cockatoo, and your spotted deer. So, this will contribute to your target 15.5, which, which is, of course, to protect and prevent the extinction of your threatened species. And another program is your Enhanced National Greening Program. This is, of course, by DNRFMB or your Forest Management Bureau. The program is to reforest 7.1 million hectares. Uh, this is actually in line with another program that we have, the Master Plan for Forestry, which will, um, uh, the coverage or yung timeline nito is from 2016 to 2028, which actually covers your uh, target number 15.2. So, yun po yung current status ng ating SDG goal or other SD goals in the Philippines, particularly your 13, 14, and 15. Thank you po for listening. Goodbye po. So, these are the references used for the presentation.